man who gives uh, in front of us, the man who gave a lot of, lot of, you know, money, a lot of money. Yeah? He gave maybe 100,000 pounds. Imagine one man got up and said for Sadaqa, I'm going to give 100,000 pounds. Another man says, I'm going to give one pound. One guy says, 100,000 pounds. And the one, one pound. You're laughing, yeah? You're laughing. That's what would happen, isn't it? If you had 100,000, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, one man, one pound. You'd laugh at that, yeah? <laughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, according to hadith of, hadith of Abu Dawood, Sabaqa dirhamun mi'ata alfi dirham. One man's one dirham has gone further than another man's 100,000 dirhams. One man's one dirham is more worthy in the sight of Allah than one, another man's 100,000 dirhams. How? Because Rasulullah SAW then explained, he said, that man who had a hundred thousand dirhams, he had a lot of wealth, a lot of wealth. And from there he's given a little amount, a, a wee bit, you know, a wee bit? Is that right, yeah? <laughs> wee bit of that, which was a hundred thousand, which was a hundred thousand he gave. And the other one, the other man had, the other man, how much did he have? The other man only had two dirhams with him. The other man only had two dirhams with him. He gave one dirham. The first man probably gave 1% of his wealth. The second man gave 50% of his wealth. You and me here are laughing. Uh, everybody, the man gave 100,000. We say, wow, well, mashallah. Oh, takbir. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. Even the mosque is shaking. The dome is shaking. The minaret is going to fall off. Takbir. Because he gave 100,000. Mashallah ji. Mashallah. Junab. Malik sahab. Don't get excited if, you, if your name is Malik Saab. So now a third of you are going to be Malik. Another third are going to be Chaudhry. Another third are going to be some Khan or something. Yeah, That's going to make all of you up. But the one who gave one pound. I, I tell you one pound. One pound. Could have given a five. Could have given a ten. One pound. One pound. Yeah? And Allah Azza wa Jalla has made the difference already. Why? Allah sees what the man gave. Allah knows how many percent he gave. Allah knows how many percent the first one gave. Allah judges me and you differently from the way we judge one another, brothers. So when you get to Jannah, one of the first things that will strike us is we're going to see a lot of surprises. Sometimes the people you expect to be Jannah and Jannah, they won't be there. And sometimes you don't expect them to be there, they'll be there. Don't start making your judgment on this earth. There are people who at the last moment, they were a bad person all their life. And the last moment Allah wants to take him Jannah, Allah will take him Jannah. I'm not talking about small time gangster here, I'm talking about big time gangster. Big time gangster, what's, what's a big time gangster? What did he do out there, tell me. Now let's talk about big time gangster on your streets, what did he do out here, come on. What did he do, come on. He sells what? Drugs. All right, drugs, sells it, okay? And if somebody doesn't pay up, what's he going to do? He's going to shoot him, he's going to kill him, he's going to kill him. He's going to go for him, yeah? He's going to do something, right? So he might murder one, he might murder a second one, but he's, gonna, he's not going to murder so many. Imagine you had a big time gangster who murders not one, not 10, not 20, not 30, he murders 99 men. Imagine, you had, a, you had one. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he talked about a, a gangster, a big timer, a murderer, a you know, murderer. He murders people. <laughs> so that person, what happens is he murders 99 of them, he, he kills them. Then after 99, he feels bad. Sahih is a Muslim, he feels bad. So he goes up to one of the worshippers, one who used to worship Allah, but never knew much about the religion. This is before Islam. So he said to him, he said, hey listen, my friend, you're not a monk, are hey, you monk, come over here. Because you know, I've been bad, you know, I've been bad in my life, you know, like, uh, will God, will, will God, will God forgive me? Will he forgive me? Huh? So the monk said, the monk said, he said, what did you do? He said, I murdered 99 men. He said, you murdered 99 men? He said, God's not going to forgive you. You know what he did? He said, yeah, I murdered you too. He killed him. He killed him. He said, 100. 
100, sorry, the hadith doesn't say he was Scottish, but I'm trying to get it to relate to you. Then what happens after that is that he feels regret again. So he starts walking away from there, then he goes, you know what, I better have gone ask somebody else. So he finds now a learned man, one who knows the religion. And he says to him, he says, he says, I've done something really bad. He said, what? He said, I murdered 100 men. He said, you did that? He said, what do I do now? He said, he said, he said to him, will Allah forgive me? He said, yeah, Allah will forgive you. He said, but what you need to do is you need to go and travel away from this city. You need to go to that other city where there's good people there. Because this city, there's a lot of you know, bad people here. So this murderer, he walks off. He walks off. He's killed 100 men. 100 people he's killed them. He walks off. He hasn't taken too many steps. He's going to the good city. He's on his way there. And he hasn't taken many steps. And then Allah has, has decreed that he's going to die at that moment. He's going to die. So you know he's dead. Normally when you die, you're either going to see 500 angels coming from Jannah in white clothing or you're going to see 500 angels coming from Jahannam in black clothing. If they come from Jannah, they bring perfume with them and they bring loads of good scents with them. If they're from Jahannam, they bring hammers with them, hammers. They bring axes with them, they bring skies with them, they bring other things to try to rip you apart. And they bring very constrained uh, bags, they're going to put your soul inside. And they bring with those bags a smell of the worst smell you've smelled in this world. You know what this man had? This man, first time in history, he sees what? He sees 500 white ones and 500 black ones. 500 white ones, 500 black ones. The white ones say what? This man is going to Jannah. The black ones say, no, no, this man is going to Jahannam. The white ones say, what? What you talking about? This man murdered a hundred men. He can't go. He can't go to Jannah. He got to go to Jahannam. He got to burn, burn inside there. Am I getting it right? Burn inside. I'll become a squash by the time I finish my five days here, I'll be honest with you. There's the other said, no, 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 no. This man did Toba. He repented. He's got to go to Jannah. So they both basically, no, 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 no. Who sent both of them? Who sent both of them? Allah. So they said, wait, let's go back to Allah. So they went back to Allah. And Allah Azza wa says what? Allah says, okay. He knows. He knows the whole thing. Allah says, Oh my angels, go back and start measuring the earth. If the earth is more closer to the city of the evil people, then you take him to Jahannam. And if the earth is more closer where he has walked, where he's dying right now, if he's more closer to the people of the good city, then he goes to Jannah. Then the angels started to swoop down, coming down to the earth. Before the angels hit the earth, Allah said, O oh earth, throw this man towards the good city. And the earth throws him towards the good city. The angels come, they start to measure the earth and they find him closer to the good city. They take him to Jannah. They take him to Jannah. Allah. Murder of a hundred men go to Jannah. Allah. Doesn't matter what crime. I'm not, I'm not asking you guys to go and murder outside there right now. Yeah? Hey, I'm not asking. I heard in Glasgow they all carry knives or something. You know, that's what I heard. <laughs> if you pick on it, someone they got a knife somewhere. Yeah, I'm not asking you to murder. Anyone. What I'm asking you to do is, doesn't matter what sin you've committed, you could have done zina, you could have, you could have lied, you could have cheated, you could have mugged. But I'm not asking you to carry on doing that. No, you come clean to Allah, clean. You say I'm not going to do it anymore. Allah Azza wa Jal will make you cross the bridge on the day of judgment with his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. 